Hey guys, welcome back to A-Level Lessons. Right, in this video, we're going to be looking at the next part of our math topical series for stats or mechanics. Some of you guys may call it mechanics. Um, we're going to be covering the next part of our distributions, looking at sampling distribution. So this video uh, or this part, okay, we're going to be looking very specifically at um, sampling distribution in relation to your normal distribution. Right, so in the previous video, we've already covered what your normal distribution is. Uh, I'll leave a link in the top right corner of the screen as well as in the description below. Go ahead and check out what normal distribution was all about. And then when you look at sampling distribution, it's kind of like a follow-up. Right? It will usually come out as a, as a sort of um, last part to a certain question right, that was built upon the normal distribution topic. So a lot of you guys will be seeing this term, right? Um, sampling distribution is usually used in conjunction with the, oops, apologies on that, with the central limit theorem. All right, and we'll be discovering more about what this whole idea of this uh, central limit theorem is, right? Essentially, when we look at sampling distribution, we are looking to take a sample, all right? So when you look at probability as a whole, right, the central limit theorem, it basically says that in uh, a, a certain number of situations, right, when your independent random variable is added, what happens is that they will all basically be summed towards this normal distribution, right, no matter how many variables have been added. Right, so even if the, the original variables themselves were not originally normally distributed, right, as we take this sample size and assume this central limit theorem, we're actually able to come to a conclusion and um, normal or uh, normally distribute whatever this um, original variable was. And I know it sounds a bit confusing, right? We'll take a look more at um, what this is like in numbers. So as we've learned in the previous part, a normal distribution goes by x that is normally distributed by mu sigma square. Right, we have already learned what this is. Okay, your your variance, your standard deviation for sigma, as well as your mu for the mean. So when you look at sampling distribution, I apologize. Apologize if there's you know a lot of traffic or what in the background. I hope it's not too loud. Right, when we look at sampling distribution. We're looking at a sample. So you have to have a certain sample size that is given to you, denoted by this n. Right, so n could be equals to let's say forty, could be equals to fifty. 100 and the uh, possibilities are endless, right? But this is essentially what the sample size is. So when you look at a sampling distribution, we're going to be taking what the sample of this normal distribution is, which is denoted by x bar, right? So the, the line that just goes above x is known as bar. So this x bar, which is basically going to be x1 plus x2, so whatever this variable is, plus x3 plus however much or whatever the question gives you plus xn over the entire of the sampling size that is given n. So n over here right, stands for the sample size. So this is dependent on whatever the question has given you as well. So when we actually look at the distribution of x bar, we come to this conclusion that x bar which is going to be n, the average, right? The average is um, whatever all of these variables have averaged out to, your mean. And then sigma square over n, which is the sample size. This is basically what is distributed exactly if n independent um, observations observations so just you just follow along and write this down further I'll explain it in a bit taken from a normal distribution population all right so what I'm trying to say is that basically x bar is so think of it very simply right it's just trying to tell you that this um, um, what happens is that when there is a certain population size, a certain sample size that you're trying to take out of this population, what happens is that we can kind of like streamline it into this thing called x bar, which is our sample, uh, sample distribution, and normally distribute it such um, that 
whatever this amount of observations are, right, this n independent observations, right, it will basically follow this normal distribution. So likewise, for this part, it's only when we look at a question and we'll see how we can apply it accordingly. But let's say if a question gives you an example. Right, so let's say the question gives you an example. X is normally distributed by 60, 4 square, and they give you the n is maybe say 15. And they tell you that um, you can take a sampling distribution out of this normal distribution. You would simply write the x bar. So the mean stays the same no matter what the sample is, right? Because the average is, uh, or this mean value mu, will always remain constant for this entire, um, for every single independent observation. All right, so we have 60, and then we'll have to take 4 square over the sample number and use the word exactly. So we'll see that this word exactly uh, comes in very important later on because when we look at central limit theorem, central limit theorem is more of an um, assumption. It is more of an approximate. So we'll use a different term right? because central limit theorem looks at distributions that may not even be a normal distribution. Right? In this case of using exactly is when we have a normal distribution that has really been given by the question. Right, I hope you guys have been able to follow thus far. I know it's it's a bit uh, complicated in words. Right, when we look at a question later on, um, how we can do it in a question, you find that actually it makes a lot of sense and it's uh, quite systematic in the way it works. So let's look at the next part on your central limit theorem. So this is where I guess a lot of you guys will be finding questions, right? You guys will have to quote that um, by central limit theorem or whatnot, um, depending on what the question is given. Because some questions may give you, let's say, a binomial distribution, and they'll ask you to um, find what the sample mean or the sample variance, um, or even just the variance of the distribution may be at the end of the entire question. So central limit theorem basically is an approximate, right? So for example, if n is more than equals to 20, we would conclude that n is sufficiently large. This is usually the general rule of thumb, right? So when it's sufficiently large, we can actually assume a sampling distribution for whatever the original distribution type was. So hence, we have to quote by central limit theorem. Some people use CLT, right? Do quote the whole thing. Um, X bar will be normally distributed by mu sigma square over n. So this, this kind, you need to write the word approximately because it was not, or it was likely not originally a normal distribution. So we're using the central limit theorem to justify that, let's say, in the entire process of calculating the probability, it would actually um, tend towards a normal distribution in the end. <coughs> So this is just a little bonus part that I'm going to give you guys a tip on. So, if it is given in the question um, that it is a, let's say, a binomial distribution, or let's say it is a um, discrete random variable, right, DRV, right, you may have to find, so you may need to find the variance of x and the exponential or the expectant of x first. Right, the reason being is that the variance of x, as we know, is the same as sigma squared. So if you want to be able to use later on whatever you have found here for your sample distribution sigma squared, you may have to first find what the variance of x is, which we have covered how we can find this, right, in your uh, binom and discrete random, variable, uh, discrete random variable videos accordingly or respectively. And you know the expectant of x is the same as mu. So these are basically the values that you have to attain first from whatever the binom distribution or whatever the discrete random variable is before we can apply the central limit theorem. Right, so x bar and sig uh, mu sigma squared over n approximate in this case uh, sorry since it is not from a normal distribution from a normal distribution. 
right? So when we look at this case of a binomial distribution or a um, discrete random variable that was originally given the question, and the last part they asked you to find what is the let's say the normal distribution or what is the sampling um, probability, for example, um, you basically have to convert it, right, and use an approximate by using central limit theorem. So in this video, whatever I want you to, whatever you have learned, or maybe you have made, you want some stuff may not be so clear yet, the main part I want you to take away is that when we look at a normal distribution, right, cut hit ND, right, we have to use the word exactly, okay, whatever X bar was. When you look at other distributions like binomial distribution, discrete random variable, right, we have to use x bar approximately through the central limit theorem. Right, this in essence what this entire part um, on sampling distribution is where most students tend to be unsure of. Right, because the word approximately and exactly will make a difference in attaining your marks for whatever the question has been asking for. So just a little short part on your sampling distribution. Right, I hope you guys have learned something from this video. Um, and I think it was quite a uh, straightforward part and, and should be quite, quite easy to score because it's just usually a small mark question at the end of any question that's given to you. Alright, so if you did learn something, you did enjoy this video, be sure to give this video a like. If you to subscribe to the channel, it really uh, helps me out a lot. And if you have any questions, you can always just leave it in the comment section below and I will answer them as well. So if not, that's all I have. I will see you guys in the next part. Hope you guys enjoyed this video on sampling distribution. See you guys then. Bye-bye.